I'm Jeff Pospisil, the 10 minute treasurer with practical advice for improving your church's financial future. So I am diving into QuickBooks and QuickBooks online to be specific. And I'm going to be looking at setting up recurring transactions. You know, I I've done this from time to time, uh, but I never felt confident about it, but I always like it when I do it because it helps me be more accurate, more timely. Um, so I do appreciate it, but I just have never dived into it enough to take full advantage of this. So there are three different types of recurring transactions in QuickBooks. The first one is scheduled and that is set it and forget it. So you set it up and it will automatically generate the transaction without you having to do anything else. And so this is perfect for those transactions that are the same every single time, you know, like rent. Rent is always due on the same date for the same amount coded to the same place. So it's not a bad deal to have that one automatically generated. Reminder is for those transactions that happen on a regular schedule, but there's some details are tweaked usually. Um, so this will give you a notification that the bill is coming up and you could use that notification to generate a, a, a transaction using the template. A utility bill like a water bill would be a good example where you know the vendor would be populated, the due date, um, the, the coding, but then you'd have to fill in the amount to, in order to complete the bill. And the third one is unscheduled. And those are for those transactions that just don't happen regularly, but they're, but it, where it might be helpful to have some kind of a template. So this is almost like a, I would just think of this as a template. So um, I use them for complicated transactions where uh, it might be difficult to remember exactly how we code that. So I'd like to have a template in order to better be able to do that. All right, so let's go ahead and go into QuickBooks Online. And there's really two ways to create a recurring transaction. And the first way I'm gonna show you is through this gear. And when you click on that gear, um, you can go to lists. And then the third one down is recurring transactions. So, and you can see I already have some uh, scheduled bills created. You can click on that reminder list. That'll show you the reminders that are currently out there. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and new. And you can see you can create any kind of different transactions. You know, bills, checks, deposits, journal entries, expenses, those are gonna be the main ones that you can do. I'm gonna go ahead and choose bill though. And for this one, I wanna do a scheduled bill for my rent, because that one's gonna be the same every single time. So rent, and then you can see here's the drop down. it's already unscheduled. I cut checks once a week. So for me, I like a lead time of 10 days. That just seems to work well with my schedule. I'm going to choose the vendor, which happens to be in this case, uh, Minnesota Council of Churches. And it happens on the first day of every month. So you can choose a different one if that so applied. Um, you could also say, let's say it was a quarterly one, you could do monthly every three months. The start date, I'm gonna go ahead and choose July 1. And so 10 days before July 1, it's gonna generate this. Um, I'm gonna choose the terms. And then my category, I'm gonna go ahead and choose rent. Uh, description, I, I might put rent on office uh, number 210. And then the amount, whatever the amount is, and I'm just making that up. And then if I wanted to, I could add the memo or maybe the attach the contract or something like that if I wanted to. And there it is, it was that easy. So there's my rent and that is ready to go. It'll generate, you see the next time it'll, it'll create a bill dated July 1 when we get close to that uh, date. Now I wanna show you the difference between a reminder and a scheduled recurring transaction. So let's go ahead and go up to new and let's uh, choose a bill again. And I want a reminder for my accounting bill. So I'm gonna go ahead and do accounting and under the type, I'm gonna choose reminder. And again, I'm gonna put in 10 days because I cut checks once a week. And for my vendor, that's JCT accounting. And that bill is the first day of each month and start date July 1. And for my terms, that came in automatically because I entered that already in my um, vendor file. And for the code, I'm account. Actually, it's not accounting. Uh, what is the, the code? Let me scroll down. It's legal and professional services. So honestly, that's why you do this. So you can code things 
um, consistently. So I, I'm not accidentally coding it to something else. And I'm going to leave the amount here blank because that amount's going to change every month. And I'm going to go ahead and save the template. And now uh, here it is on the bottom. I could edit it here. I can use it, duplicate it, pause it, skip it, delete it. Uh, one of the things I want to show you is what it'll look like when you actually use it. So I'm going to use it to generate my June bill. I, so everything's set up. I got to change the bill date. So I'll change that to the 1st of June. I'm going to just make up an invoice number and then I'm going to plug in an amount. And uh, that that's actually how you do it. So it sets up most everything for you. All you have to do is put in the right amount, the right invoice date. Uh, the schedule bills have the same kind of thing where you can edit them, you could use them. Um, so the same functionality there if you wanted to as well. All right, our third and final one is our unscheduled recurring transaction. And again, you go to the same place, new, and I wanna do a bill again, just so it'll show the difference very clearly. And one of the more complicated transactions I do is when I receive and pay out a stock gift. So I'm gonna go ahead and do stock gift. And they're gonna make you choose a vendor. You, you'll get an error if you try to save this without a vendor. So I'm just gonna throw in Grace UMC. And watch now when I select unscheduled. All that different date stuff goes away. And now I just have to select a vendor. And I'm gonna go ahead and choose uh, terms as well, due on receipt. And what makes the stock gift kind of kind of complicated is that um, the donor will give a pass-through gift, uh, but the stock hits my investments, and then I go ahead and pay it out of my checking. So I want to record the income, the expense of the pass-through, as well as the um, the the increase in my investments, and then there's usually a fee too. And uh, we absorb the fee, so uh, the, the church and the donor get full credit for the stock gift. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill this in and put zero for amounts. So you can see the first line is the donation, the pass-through income, the second one is pass-through expense, and the third one is my investments. And then also then the fee. And I'm gonna save this and uh, now you're going to see um, now you're going to see the uh, a big difference. Now there's not the default action is not edit, it's use. So I'm going to go ahead and click use. So whenever I get received a stock gift, I can go ahead and click that. And you can see it's all set up. And now I just need to plug in the amounts. And so for my income, that's and actually, I, I, I need to put that as a negative amount. And then the expense is a positive amount, but I need to put the right number of zeros. Um, the amount I actually received into my investments is a little less than the amount of the gift because of the fee. And then that is ready to go. And I could save and close that, but I want to show you also I could change the vendor. And so let's just choose a different grace. And it's going to ask you, do you want to overwrite the entries and I'm going to say no and now it's ready to go the, uh, so I can I can technically reuse this and you know if I was going to choose a different church altogether with it not just grace I would choose no but I'd have to change that description but it, it is good to go and um, uh, easy to reuse as long as you remember to hit no So remember that there are two different ways to make a recurring transaction. And um, using the gear is, is probably the best way, but it's not the most common way, at least not for me. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll be entering in a transaction and, and it'll finally occur to me that I do this every month. Why don't I make it recurring? And that's why they put a make recurring button at the bottom of every transaction window. And so then you can go ahead and fill it in however you want. And again, this is my accounting one. So I'm just gonna uh, make it a reminder and I want to delete out the amount so that I don't accidentally pay the wrong amount. And then I want to set a start date. Um, you know, I haven't totally figured this out uh, the best because one thing you're going to see is that when you save the template, um, your original bill is gone. So I don't know if there's a better way to do that. Uh, but what I end up doing then is I use my 
reminder. And then I have to recreate my original bill. So I'd have to re put in my bill number, my amount, my bill date, and all that again. All right, I hope that helped you. Um, again, this is a ministry of the Dakotas Conference of the United Methodist Church, as well as the Dakotas United Methodist Foundation. And all of our stuff is also online as well. Uh, I encourage you to like, subscribe, share, comment if you found this helpful. All right, be blessed.